Hello and welcome to today's Bible study from College Lutheran Church in Salem, Virginia. I'm Pastor David Drebus. It's good for us to study God's Word. And we continue to study God's Word, looking through these top 100 essential Bible passages. This is a very good list put together by the Reverend Dr. Dave Delaney of the Virginia Synod of the ELCA. We come today to lesson number seven, God's Covenant with Abraham, Genesis chapter 17. Uh, we talked a little bit about Abram last week. Today he gets a new name. That's one of the signs of this new covenant that God is making with Abraham. Uh, let's hear a little bit about what that's like. Uh, chapter 17 starts with uh, these words. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord God Almighty appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Live always in my presence and be blameless so that I may make my covenant with you and give you many descendants. And then Abram bows low after hearing those words from God. Well, a covenant is like a treaty. Uh, treaties were very common uh, between different powers in the Middle East, the time that these scriptures were written. And uh, one of the things that's interesting about the covenants that God makes with uh, the people he makes covenants with is uh, that God promises to be faithful and he calls people to be faithful. So God has expectations, but God never gives up his end of the bargain, which is to um, be God for Abraham and his descendants. Um, I think that's an important thing for us to keep in mind. Uh, the foundation of the covenants that God makes with the people of Israel, uh, the offspring of Abraham and Sarah, uh, is a covenant that still stands. Uh, whether or not the people live up to their end of the bargain. Now there's signs of this covenant. I already mentioned that Abram gets the name Abraham by the end of this passage, and Sarah gets the name Sarah, uh, Sarai gets the name Sarah by the end of this passage. So there's a sense that things have really changed in how um, these people are going to get along with their God by the, um, by the end of this story. Well, the thing that uh, this, the way this story continues to puzzle me uh, is similar to what I talked about in the previous Bible study. So if you're equally puzzled and you haven't listened to what I recorded last week, you may want to go back and uh, listen to that. It is puzzling to ask why Abram? Why not somebody else? Um, that continues to be a puzzling question. But again, that's kind of the point um, that Abram is faithful to God, but he hasn't done much to sort of deserve this special attention from God. He's moved um, from one country to another because God told him to, but there was no indication that Abram um, would be an extra special person to deserve such a call from God. Uh, there's something uh, that can feel kind of random about this. Abraham has remarkable faith uh, that faith meaning trust in God, um, but the relationship is not about what Abraham has done or what Sarah has done. Uh, it's about how God is faithful, God calling these people uh, to do amazing things and them responding, but at the root of that relationship is a message about who God is, and that's much more reliable than a, um, a faith that's based on uh, people being so good and doing everything right. Uh, this is a relationship that's based on who God is. That's far more reliable. Now that's still challenging uh, to us, I think. If we have ideas of fairness, there's something about this that simply is not fair. Um, and let's let that challenge us. Life isn't fair. Um, that's, that's just a reality. And it's uh, true in the way that we live, what we see going on around us, and it's true here in our scriptures as well. Uh, I'd rather read a Bible that reflects the reality that life is not always fair than a Bible that pretends um, that life is always fair and everyone always gets what they deserve. Uh, the Bible is much more true to life. Uh, I find that comforting in a roundabout way. And I also take comfort from these scriptures when we're told that this starts, um, this chapter starts with Abraham being 99 years old. That means he'll be 100 when Isaac is finally born. 
Uh, God is capable of always doing a new thing, even when we least expect it. Um, people of every age have value. People of every age have callings. I hope you know that, no matter how old or young you are, uh, God is always capable of doing something new with you, and I hope you will hear him uh, when he speaks to you. Uh, he speaks to us most of all through his son, Jesus Christ, and that again is an everlasting covenant that God makes to us. Uh, the sign for us is baptism. Uh, the ongoing sign is uh, Holy Communion. Um, but the chief sign for us in our faith is Jesus Christ. And that is another promise God makes to us through his son that isn't about us doing the right things, but it's a message about who God is. So I find that consistency through our scriptures remarkable, and I find it comforting, and I find it uh, gives me hope even in days when uh, we don't know exactly what's going to happen next. Um, let us meditate on these things this week. I hope you continue to read through your scriptures, and I hope uh, you are finding uh, meaning as we tackle some of these uh, essential stories. God be with you. Amen.